Hello guys, so we'll be starting today onwards our experiments using virtuoso cadence to the right. So starting today we'll be doing our first experiment which is the MOSFET characteristics. So in this we'll study both NMOS and PMOS one by one. So in this video first we'll try to uh, create a new library in virtuoso cadence and then start doing experiments one by one. So today I'll be showing the ID versus BDS uh, characteristics of an NMOS. So let's straight dive into the virtual machine which is already opened the oracle vm virtual box and here the cadence you can make a new file and then go to the new and make a first time because first time you have to create a new library then the next time you don't need to wait to create the new library rather you can reuse the same library where which you have created the first time to store all your experiments in the same library suppose in this i will be creating a new library suppose i will name it as um okay for the reference you can name it anything of your own preference for this uh, time i am referencing this as the name you okay and here in this technology file what you need to do is you need to change it to attach to an existing technology library okay so here nothing goes there just the thing is you need to mention that you are attaching to an existing technology library which means whatever is there like gpdk 180 gpdk 90 gpdk 45 nanometer technology so whatever existing technology library you have in this uh, software so you are attaching this library towards that so you will just click ok and you can see a new library has been created here okay so and now you need to attach it to which library so as all these experiments we will do it under 180 nanometer technology so we'll use the general process design kit 180 nanometer okay so uh, the thing right uh, here this gpdq what it mentions is it's a generic process okay so it can't be taken up to the fabrication level so it's a generic process not a, a specific which can be taken up to the fab level so we'll use this library for our practice and we'll do all the sets of experiment in this library itself or you can see there are 45 nanometer 90 nanometer and 180 nanometer also but we will be using 180 nanometer technology now click on okay so the library has been successfully created if you can see here now what you can do is file you can do new and then cell view now here you change the library which you had just created youtube and now you name your first experiment whatever you have to name under this cell so suppose my first experiment will be nmos characteristics right so i'll write nmos characteristics and i'll just hit ok so this window will pop up and this is my design window where i will do with my experiments now starting first let me show the schematic of your your nmos how does it look like so this is your nmos here so this uh, the top terminal is the drain, the side terminal is the gate, and the lower the bottom terminal is your source. So what you have to do is you need to connection make a, a connection like this. That is VGS should be positive because uh, right now I won't be teaching how and MOS works, which a voltage, which set of voltage to be given, whether VGS should be positive to be operated, whether VDS should be positive or negative. Right now, assuming that we already know this stuff, how the working of NMOS is. So directly I am jumping to the diagram so that I can make connections in the cadence tool and we can see the simulation waveforms. So if you don't know any, I will suggest to you to please go back and just revise your MOS portion. So how all these connections are made, why VDS and VGS is positive while the this substrate here uh, is negative. Although we won't be using this first, we'll uh, today first only see uh, uh, connecting the body with the source directly not using the extra potential here uh, we'll cover this part why this vsp is negative but for the time being now just eliminate this vsp and we will connect the remaining voltages okay so we'll jump again now what we're gonna do here is first you can press the i button on your keyboard so it adds the instance okay so here you choose your library first okay so now it's not that you have to choose your own library because nothing has been stored in that my library. So whatever existing library, suppose GPDK90 is there, GPDK180. So I'm using GPDK180 so I can use that library to get my NMOS. So if I use GPDK180, then go to the cell. Now you can see, you can do browse also here to select more efficiently. So GPDK180, so you just write NMOS here so it gets the NMOS. The symbol is already clicked. So if you drag it here, so you can get this NMOS here. So simply what you can do is, you can close this you can also hide this and then you can press the nmos here okay 
So this is your NMOS structure. So here what happens that the above terminal is drained. This one is gate right here and this is the source terminal. So according to the diagram what I need now, I need two voltage sources and some two ground connections to be able to connect. So I will get some DC sources now. Right? So DC sources are stored in which library? It is stored in the analog library. Okay. So all these things are in the analog library. I can write simply a DC. So it gives me a suggestion. So I can click VDC. Again, symbol is there. So now how much voltage should I give here? So DC voltage of 1.8 volts. Okay. So I get a 1.8 voltage because that is my logic high and logic low. Because logic high I'm treating as 1.8 and logic zero as 1.8. So same voltage I'm giving as VDC here. So I press it here. Again, it will give you the option to press another. So it, until or unless you don't press the right click, it doesn't vanish away. So if I press here and then do the right click or press escape, it vanishes. Sorry, not the right click. You just need to press the escape. Okay. So right here. Now I need to join this using wires. So for wires, we can press W on the keyboard to activate wire thing. So right here, you can see this is your wire. So simply you can drag and drop the wires and simply here okay so this is how you can create wires and then simply what you can do is you need a ground connection also so I'll get ground from the same analog library so GND the ground as you can see here so I need three grounds so you can directly you can actually put it here and then add the wire but directly you can also do it like this something like this so this is your circuit right now what about this body terminal this so for now what you do is directly connect this body terminal with the source so that the source and body will be shorted right so vsb here is zero so we have shorted the uh, uh, body and source voltage after this now all the circuit has been designed now the first graph what we'll be seeing is the id versus VDS graph okay so I'll show you how that graph looks like this is the ID versus VDS graph where VGS is a parameter so VGS is varying from suppose 0 to 5 volts or something like that here in this case so what we'll do is we'll take uh, output as current ID input as VDS and parametrically will vary VGS so for VGS equals 1 volt if we vary VDS this curve will come and then simply if you shift VGS equal to 2 volt and vary again VDS from 0 to VDD so this curve shall come so we'll see it in the CAD install so for that if we need to calculate our ID versus VDS so which is my VDS voltage this V1 although you can name it also as VDS here somewhere um, see instance name is there so you can choose to name them also for your convenience right so you can name them VDS see now this has been changed to VDS and this is your VGS so that later you don't find confusion of which one is V0 and which one is V1. For that purpose, you can name them. Now, I need to find ID versus VDS and parametrically vary VGS. Okay. Suppose, uh, forget about the parameter condition now. Suppose simply I want to find ID versus VGS for VGS equals 1.8 volt. So what I can do is I can go to the launch ADL window. This window pops up, right? And then we can choose this analysis window. In this analysis window, what I'm going to do here now is the DC analysis, right? The uh, we, what we can do here is component parameter. After choosing the component parameter, it asks to select the component which you want to vary, right? So I'm selecting which this my VDS voltage. Select the DC voltage here because VDS, I am varying VDS to check the IDS. So that's why. In the component parameter in this so i have checked the component name as vds so start voltage is from zero and it will go to vdd that is 1.8 volt so simply click on ok go to this so you have here this dc analysis has been selected that is the vds is starting from zero going till 1.8 now for output for this window go to the outputs go to to be plotted that is select on design so now we'll select on design which output we i need i need the current id for current choose the nodes and for voltages choose the wire now i need current so i can't choose id because i know current id will be flowing from this wire going into this drain but when you need to choose uh, current in the adl window you choose the node and when you, if you had to uh, select vds so you could have select output vds from here you could have select this wire 
So it would have chosen the VDS, but we need current ID. So I can choose this node. So this has been highlighted. You can check it here. So you can see it here. The output has been uh, the NMOS output has been taken here. That is the current. Okay. Now if I simply do this uh, simulation uh, run button, so we can get the output. So you see here. So we are getting ID versus VGS output. You can change the background also here from this graph properties. You go right click graph properties, background, choose white color. Okay. And here it changes. You can also select then you can make the solid because it's a dash line. So you can make it like this also. So whatever is your wish, you can do it with this. So this is your ID versus VDS curve for VGS equals 1.8. Why VGS equals 1.8? Because already in the uh, design itself we have set VGS equals to 1.8 we are not varying VGS now suppose what I want to do is I want to get this curve right I want to check it for I got only this the top curve right the top curve suppose if I may show you I hope you have understood but let me still okay so what we have done so far is that this is your ID this is your v ds so vgs is already set to 1.8 volt right vgs is your 1.8 volt that is vdt so for vgs equal to vdt we got this curve but we want to vary vgs from 0 till vdt so we will get all these curves so parametrically we have to vary vgs so for that thing what we'll do again i'll go to my tool so i'll select my vgs and i'll remove this 1.8 Right, because I don't need to set it to 1.8, I need to vary it from 0 to 1.8 parametrically. Okay, so rather this, I can simply write it as VGS here. So, what will be the benefit to write it as VGS here? Uh, you will see uh, shortly. So, just write VGS here, press OK. Okay, and also before actually uh, moving this fast, after you create the design, you need to do this check and save this right here, which I'm pointing the save and the stick button. What it does is it actually uh, checks whether there is some error in the design or not whether the design whether there is some node which you have connected you have for suppose you didn't connect this uh, body terminal with the source and you directly went to launch ADL window so the output won't be proper so before that you always do this check and save so it would give you a warning that there is this floating node is there so I didn't do it thankfully we didn't have any error in the design but you have a good practice of doing this check and save once you do this check and save again I can go now back to my ADL window right now go to this now we'll use our third window this is that is design variables okay now which variable is there in obviously now i have created a variable vgs so it will automatically detect all those variables which i have created suppose if i also write this as vg uh, vds uh, apart from fixing it to 1.8 we can also get that variable inside that design variable windows for now i have created only one variable that is vgs i have not hard set it to 1.8 volt rather i'm creating a variable now this variable will be varied from 0 to vdd now you'll see in this area window under this design variables you see there's variables so what do you do copy from cell view that is th this your cell which you have just created you copy all the variables from your cell view so once you do this it automatically detects there is one variable named as vgs okay now you give set VGS here to 1.8 volt. Again, don't confuse that we are again hard setting it to 1.8 volt. Now we are giving the maximum limit here that is 1.8 volt. Now what we'll do is we'll go to this tools uh, and then there is this parametric analysis, right? So under this parametric analysis, now because it says add a variable and already we have added one variable VGS. So it will again automatically just click on it this drop down menu so it has detected VGS variable and again automatically it has assigned a value 1.8 because we had chosen the value 1.8 so this parametric analysis now what you do is you go from 0 to 1.8 now I'm giving that start and, start and step mode what you do is you do linear steps and total step size is asking so you give a step size of 0.3 so what it does is it goes till 1.8 with a step size of 0.3 that is every uh, jump it takes suppose first it is shows for, for 0 volt then the next it shows for 0.3 because step size is 0.3 right then 0 0.3 0 0.6 then 0 0.9 like that from 0 to 1.8 how much steps you need because 0 to 1.8 are infinite number of values so how many values you need to plot so you are giving that you are mentioning that step size here okay so I need this 0.3 step size between 0 to 1.8 so automatically it will see how much points so uh, how much graphs 
it need to take under the tool right now what you simply do is you again click on the run button because already id and vgs are selected right uh, vds is selected here from 0 to 1.8 id current is selected so again it will plot id versus vds itself but this time the beauty is that we have added the parametric analysis that is we are varying vgs also from 0 to 1.8 so this is what we meant by parametric now we'll do the run and hopefully it should generate the output for us so you need to wait for some time and yeah boom so you get the output right so it's with different colors you can do select one do shift and select all just for if you need solid lines right that's it so now if you hover over this you will get the vgs value is 1.8 so this is for which vgs the topmost vgs that is the vdd so for this the current value and voltage value is showing this is for vgs equals 1.5 this is for vgs equal 1.2 so you can see there is a progression of 0.3 so vgs equals 0.9 vgs equals 1.2 vgs equals 1.5 vgs equals 1.8 so that's what we meant by step size right so this is the waveform which we had generated in our this, uh, this what, what what needs to be generated for id versus vds graph and successfully we have verified that the nmos works like this when connected so the things are i hope pretty clear how we did all the stuff i think i'll end this video now because i don't want it to get too lengthy so i'll be making these short videos so that it will be helpful for you so what i showed in this lecture today that you can connect it all the voltage supplies short the body and source connect the grounds and then you can assign the values itself in the first iteration that was 1.8 volt 1.8 volt and you can see the single graph that is simply for id versus vds vds is varying from 0 to 1.8 while vgs was fixed at 1.8 so in that case it gave you just this curve right that's the topmost curve this green one the above but once you choose the parametric analysis so you need to get a variable okay you need to get a variable so for that what we did is we chose this vgs in the see sometimes a student makes mistake they change the instance name as vgs this is just the name of that uh, block this doesn't mean any this is not a variable here dc voltage instead of 1.8 you need to give vgs now this vgs will be considered as a variable so don't confuse this vgs and vgs this is the actual vgs variable voltage and this is just the name you could write it anything here right this doesn't i don't care about this just for your referencing this doesn't mean anything right so this is just for your uh, referencing that later when you try to find out uh, where is vgs uh, because in the ideal window it will be mentioned with v0 this is the v0 block this is the v1 block suppose you add 10 blocks so there will be naming like v0 v1 v2 v3 so that case you will get confused which was v1 whether that was vds or vgs so you give naming so the actual variable is when you give under the dc voltage it has vdc equals vgs so that will create a variable so then what you need to do simply you need to play with these three that is the analysis window where you can do the uh, this dc analysis choose the component we chose the uh, vds component because we needed id versus vds curve so then we chose the output from here to be plotted select on design and we chose the node right so remember this point for current choose node for voltage choose wire and we will see these in many cases in the next experiments when we need to choose voltages and uh, in this case now under the variables go to copy from cell view it will automatically direct. then go to tools tools you will go parametric analysis it will open the parametric analysis window for you right and then you can simply drag, uh, select the values and again do the run which will generate the waveform like this so i hope you enjoyed this video stay connected we will cover one by one all the things and if there is any feedback just write in the comments thank you for this video and i'll see you the next time